No, no one wants it in the front and everyone wants it there in the back, so nothing, nothing, nothing changes. I'd like to welcome you all here uh, this morning. Uh, my name is Orla Carroll, I'm the Director of Quality Development at Fulge Ireland. But on behalf of myself and Fulge Ireland and, and, and uh, Quiltia, I'm delighted that you're all here in Avondale. Um, so this holds a special place, I think, in Dahi and my heart in the sense that we're probably, a lot of people were involved in developing this project. We're probably the only two who were involved in the very beginning and sit here at the very end. I don't know if that says something about us. Um, well, hopefully it says something good about us. Um, but uh, it, it, is a, it is a project that we, we took, I suppose, a very uh, beautiful and simple uh, forest park and made it into a wonderful visitor and tourism experience. And I suppose um, that's why I suppose that this morning it, I, I'm, I'm going to talk of, uh, from a tourism angle and, 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 and bring you through that. Just to, I suppose, go through housekeeping before I go into that. Um, you're familiar, this is your delegate guide and conference resource. There has been changes to the agenda. That's just to keep you on your toes, just in case anyone's getting comfortable or anyone's thinking of sneaking off either. Um, as you'll see, there's only one way in and one way out of this room, so we know who leaves. Uh, so that's not happening. Um, this room used to, this building, uh, I suppose, was kind of chapel esque stroke meeting house. Um, when we were first looked at Avondale, this was a, a, a very derelict <coughs> building um, and uh, ice cold and thankfully we do have a massive heater in here today because I tell you, before then you wouldn't have been able to sit in here. Uh, and really, um, clever fashion, to, to the left of the door, you're not allowed to go through, but there's a, another massive building which has a really creative name of the Big Shed. So, um, uh, but all, all of it does, does come together. But anyway, back to the agenda, sorry, I, did, I, I got distracted. So the first two items are here, so we've got that part, so we're, we're, we're well on the way with the agenda. Uh, you're going to listen to myself, and I'm going to talk about tourism, uh, then Dahi is going to talk about uh, how data has informed the transformation of Avondale, uh, then continuing on the data uh, vein, uh, Gavin Sarvis is going to talk about from the King uh, Charles Coast Path. Uh, and data is actually really, really important. We do really need to do more with it, and that's why I'm delighted to see it again on the agenda then later on. I won't go through everybody just so you know what's coming next. And then with a view that we finish at 12 for lunch, and then the bit that you're all really waiting for uh, is the journey through and above the trees at Avondale. Um, and I suppose, again, I, I feel like I'll, I'll talk a lot about this. When we had this idea, where we were trying to make, make this this site that we knew was special, something uh, more. Um, and Quilch obviously a huge you know, knowledge of, of, of forestry, and I remember I was chatting and I was kind of going, we were all talking about going, I said, yeah, but for normal people, that's not really interesting, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, you know, talk with it in depth and, and, and stuff, so that we said, okay, how do we marry that, lo that depth of knowledge and that passion with a generalist? And that's where we came up with the idea of uh, below the trees, through the trees, and on top of the trees. And hopefully when you experience that today, you really will see um, how it accomplishes everything from showing the, the, the love of, of, of the nature and what's there, um, bringing it into a, a visitor experience that people want to, to, to come and see and share, um, and have those moments with, 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 with family, but also uh, conserving the, the, the environment around it and, and sharing it with others. Um, so that's that. Now, on to, on to myself here. Um, I'm going to talk to you about, about, about tourism and the outdoor uh, side of things. And actually, it's quite poignant being here today. Um, uh, I was just down in, in, in Killarney yesterday, down in Killarney National Park, is one foot between Wicklow today. Um, but we were celebrating, uh, we had Mehel, we had 260 buyers from all around the world, we bring them in, in every year. But we were actually celebrating the 10th. Uh, birthday of the Wild Atlantic Way. Uh, it was a project I was, was involved in from the beginning. But what is great about that is, is again, show you about that, what that actually delivered, despite it, everything's this great brand and it's wonderful all this, it delivered 35,000 additional jobs in 10 years. Okay? That's 35,000 people who are living in their communities, who are going to schools, who are getting, you know, in the shops, who are living, and as a, so, it brings energy back to communities. It maintains uh, rural areas. So it's really, really important, you know, when we, sometimes there can be a, a negative thought on, on, on tourism and it's over tourism and, and, and it can do that. And that's what it has to be managed. But what it can actually bring is it brings regeneration back to an area and enables people to live where they've grown up and come back and have, have jobs and establish businesses. 
and brings out people's entrepreneurial spirit. So I just wanted to share that with you because um, for us, that, that's what we try and do in, 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 in Fulja. Um, when we're looking at areas, it, it is about how do we, how can tourism help this community um, uh, regenerate, how it can have an economic impact um, and make sure that people can continue to live and, and, and work here and, and, and grow. And I suppose we've always employed in our strategy, um, we implement the VICE model. We've done, been doing it for, for, for years and the visitor should always, you're, you're here in every, every business is the visitor first and it is the visitor first. But we've actually flipped that on a new corporate strategy. It's still there, but we flipped it that it's about the environment and the community first <laughs> because we will always deliver for the visitor. That, that was what we would do. But we need to make sure we do that in a way that protects the asset that we are utilising and recognises that we are doing it in a community that people have to, to, to live in and that people should be proud of the project. And I, I, again, just using uh, Avondale as an example, when we first started looking at Avondale, there was people in the local community not open to this idea. They went, oh no, and they were against it. Um, and thanks to, to, to Dahi, we brought them on board. And the people who were originally saying, save Avondale, they were saying, save it from us. Actually, they kept the slogan, but it was, this will save Avondale. And that's really important that we bring communities with us and realising that how we do that uh, uh, works for them and work, works for all. So I just kind of wanted to, to, to share that with you and I suppose in light of that kind of our strategic thinking is in the sense that it, everything is done through that vein. So we still want to, Ireland to be a leading sustainable tourism destination, it has to be. But we have to do that in one that makes sure that we restore and protect our environment and that we're champions on it um, from that perspective. But saying that you know, the community needs to be on board, we want to harness it for, 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 for good uh, and support local development and authentic destinations. And it's about destination development, because a good place to visit is also a good place to live. You know, we all know in our own travels when we go away, you want to meet with people <coughs> and locals and all that. So the, the, two, the two coincide. Uh, similarly, you know, it has to be um, uh, uh, a thriving economy, uh, it has to be one that we've got great visitor experiences because people won't, won't come um, and has to deliver what the, what the visitor, visitor wants. So that's just supposed to give you a bit of background. I wanted to give kind of a bit of insights in terms of, from a, um, a visitor perspective, what they're looking for and what kind of motivates them. And it was interesting listening to Ellie talking last night and she, you know, she's asked what's her favourite walk and how would she recommend. And it, it depends on people because we're all not the same. And even though people may have the same interests, they're still not the same, you know? So, you know, uh, so we also have to take that, that into account. So, um, just to share this with you, you know, back in <coughs> 2009, so that's what it is, just over 600, so under 600,000 people came to Ireland for walking holidays. That grew to 2.4 million in 2019, okay? Uh, we don't have, <coughs> COVID has thrown us all out of sorts, i be honest with you in terms of data and numbers, and we have, more accurate numbers at the end of 23. However, one of the things actually that I was thrilled with with COVID in one sense is um, we always knew from a, a tourism perspective that you know our visitors coming from Germany always came with the right gear, they had the raincoat and they were able to, to go for a walk. Irish people seem to always think the sun would shine in July. It never does, but we still believed it and they try and climb Kirkpatrick and flip flops. But actually, they realised during COVID that actually we don't have, we, we have not great weather, okay? I'm not trying to, you know, lie here. But it's not bad, okay? If you just have the proper uh, clothing. Um, and COVID actually saw huge growth in domestic uh, Irish people realising what wonderful uh, assets we have on our, 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 our doorstep and actually going out and experiencing it and enjoying it, which is great. So while I see there, is, that's 2.4 million in 2019, that's growing in multiples, um, which is fantastic and it's great from a tourism perspective, but also we have to manage that because um, what happens, and we see a lot, and actually you're all in Glen de Lock, and I, I don't know if we were talking about it yesterday, apologies, I, I wasn't here, but um, we've done a master plan for Glen de Lock because people need to be told where to go, okay, or else they'll go to the one spot. And then what we do is we herd them all in, and that's what makes it. So, we have national parks with hectares upon hectares of space and everybody is all within the one square kilometre. So it's, 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 it's developing those plans so we move, move people around the place and, and, and expand on that. So from a walking perspective, and I just more here is like to, to give it a little bit of insight in this, and we've broken kind of walking down into to two areas, um, kind of 
and smaller walks and, and, and greater than 5k. And of all the outdoor activities, walking is the most um, uh, most popular from a, a tourist perspective. Most people, when they go on holiday, will actually go on a walk. Very few, there's not as many go on a walking holiday, although there are those as well. Um, but why they do is it's kind of for two motivations. And it's, it's good to know these for when we're thinking about developing the trails and what these are about for people. So it's about, it is about an exploration. So these people do want to feel that, you know, that they've, they've found an unfamiliar place. Uh, while there may not be the likes of, of, of Ellie and, and, and taking on that long a distance, they do want to feel a sense of achievement in themselves as well. Because while they may not be perhaps the most active people in the world, they want to feel proud of themselves at the end of going, yes, I did it, a 5K walk. But it's also largely about bonding. And this is where people are on holidays with family, with friends. And it is that sharing that moment with each other and having that and making that memory. So I suppose in the context of walking, it, it's not, it's actually not passive um, from, from their perspective. They do have a sense of purpose in doing it, you know, and they, they want to connect to the place, uh, they want to make the memory, um, and it is an important part of, of when they go back home and what, what they talk about. Whereas, well, she said her very first. Interesting, and this is where we're seeing change. Um, you know, hotel accommodation is where people mainly stay, but actually we're seeing a change in that, and, and more and more people, particularly people who are involved in, in, in activities, are looking for self-catering, are looking for B&B, uh, much more, um, I suppose, le less of the, the, the hotel. Um, but for us, what's great is that they're, they're staying longer. And again, hating to go down to the brass tax, but it is about money into the destination. We do want them to buy the cup of coffee, we want them to buy the soup, we want them to buy the couple of pints, like you all had last night. Some of you probably would know this. Um, but also what's interesting is, is how, they're how they're booking it. Uh, and that is, is Thankfully, they're booking it further out, which helps us manage it better, uh, which, is, which, is, which, is, which is key. On those uh, longer than, than 5K, uh, interesting, it's a different cohort. This is a much younger, uh, unconstrained adults, and by that we mean basically no kids, okay? Uh, and that's probably not surprising, because they moan, oh, do we have to go, oh, where's the next, you know what I mean? So it's probably not, not a huge surprise. Again, it's the right expression, but there's also that adventure coming in when it takes a longer, a longer trek. So it does mean it needs to be more, more challenging, um, and this is very important to them when they're, when they're choosing a destination and, and, and where to go. Um, and again, you can kind of see here, you know, it is very much uh, couples, it's groups. Again, yeah, no children, seven percent, no kids. Uh, so it is very much on that score. Um, but it is about that more and much more sense of, 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 a, of a venture. Um, we're trying to develop, and this is where we work closely with, with Quilter, we would work with the national parks, uh, I know there's uh, rural recreation officers here as well, um, right across um, the different agencies and, and, and in, in Ireland and taking people's expertise to, to, together to see how we develop the trails. Again, Ellie mentioned last night that there's not necessarily a consistency, and we do want a consistency, uh, or at least uh, an understanding and familiarity when, when people are walking in areas. So I want to share this with we are developing the very best <coughs> way. I think it was mentioned last night as well. Uh, I mean, and this is where, you know, um, you really have to recognize the importance of communities. Uh, you know, this has come together over the last 23 years by communities on the ground. Um, and we've got to recognize that and, and then work with them and build it because uh, communities have the passion and the desire, they may not necessarily have, have, have the money or sometimes the, the expertise beyond a certain point, the particular, and that's where it's important to, to, to work together. And uh, we do believe it can be uh, a signature experience for, for Ireland's in Heartlands and it goes right up the centre of Ireland and be, be really, really important for, for, for that brand area. Um, I talk about working with others and, and here is a, a scheme with working with the Department of Rural and Community Development and it is on that. And, like just to show you, these are the number of projects that are underway currently right across the country. So you've got just under 400 uh, with, uh, projects which are getting under 30k, another 173 getting uh, just under uh, half a million. But all these have been worked on. So they are all trails all around the country. So there really is a huge network um, of opportunity uh, uh, out there. Greenways are hugely important. Um, Shows you how long I've been around. I remember the first greenway we opened in in, in Mayo, uh, and at the time, um, people were like, "What are you doing?" You know, and they'd never take on. 
and uh, now every county in Ireland wants one, and you know, but there's a nervousness as well in the sense that there, there's a feeling that oh, we have a green way, it's like the you know um, a white knight, it'll cure all ills. It, it's not that either. They have to be developed correctly. From a tourism perspective, they really have to link things to see and do, uh, because that gets people to stay longer. If they stay longer, that is more money in, in, into, the, into the, the, the town. But also, it is about the interpretation and, and, and science. So, Greenway is actually funny. It originally started as a tourism project. It's moved over to a transport project in, in, here in Ireland. But actually, we work with the uh, Department of Transport because we bring in the interpretation sign, side of it and the signage side of it to make it easier for visitors to understand it and to get that sense of place of why one is, is what, why you want to do more. So there's a huge growth in them. Uh, they're absolutely fantastic. They're a great asset, but they do have to, um, y you, you, it's managing that, that it actually works from a, a tourism perspective and motivate visitors to, 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 to come. Uh, I want to talk about other activities other, other than walking. Um, and, you know, while we're not the warmest climate in the world, um, you know, a good old wetsuit means you can do anything. Um, so we've looked at developing water sports facilities around the country, and this is kind of a pilot we're starting with, with 20 locations right around the country. Um, and this came from the fact that we, we developed a national surf centre in Strand Hill because the many people who were surfing and then, you know, uh, freezing to death as they changed in the boot of a car on the side of a road. And that's not a great tourism experience. And while that's fine when you're able to live there and you can nip, nip in the car and head home and have a nice shower, it did mean that people weren't staying in the town to have a bowl of soup or a cup of coffee because they wanted to get back to their hotel or wherever it is. So again, it's about this dwelling time. So what we looked at here, though, um, uh, was very much where are there already activity providers in place? Okay, because it's about safety as well. So where there was, then we we'll work with the local authorities to build these facilities and the executive design there. It'll have showers, changing, all that, uh, places for. Um, uh, uh, inductions like safety um, uh, briefings before people do activities and everything. So we really do believe this will open actually Ireland as a, a water sports destination um, and, and, and grow that side of things as well. Um, keeping with the water, I was mentioned yesterday about blue waves, we're growing them around the country and uh, accrediting them. And then also mountain biking, again a project with, with, with Quilcha. We're looking to have five, um, five centres of excellence uh, around the country and again building uh, trailheads here as well but also what we're doing as well uh, is, and it's really important and something again part of our strategy is a whole area about inclusive and accessibility of it so we are looking even uh, in all these mountain biking and again the, the water sports facilities <coughs> to put in changing places so that we actually give uh, as much uh, opportunity to, to, to people uh, as, as, as possible um, and we do want Ireland to be an inclusive uh, destination. That's hugely important. Um, one of the th reasons why we want to do this is, is because we believe in events, you know, and you can't win events or, you know, European or national or your global events unless you actually have facilities. But they also start small and they're, they're huge. Um, you know, participant events are really, really uh, important and they are tend to be, you know, outside the key season and all that sort of stuff as well. But where we come with Volge in the sense of is, from a tourism perspective, we're not the expert at organising the event. Okay, that's not our ability. But what we want to do is make it kind of more of a festival. So that when people come to participate in the event, they bring their family and friends with them. Because then it's a weekend and we don't have a bit of fun and all a bit of crack. Um, you know, your, your husband, partner, or whatever can partake in the event. Um, and, <coughs> and if you're not feeling active, you're still, you're, you're still coming and we're still getting the dollar out of you. So it's about growing that and, and growing that more. And, and, and as you can see, even just looking there, and you probably won't be able to read it, I don't know if you will be able to read it now, because I'm back to frontier. Um, it's looking at all the people who come together to make that work. I think that is the most important thing in, 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 in this, is that it is true collaboration, and together, working together we can succeed. Working separately we won't, and we'll all, you know, we do, we do grand, but to be great, we need to come together. Um, I wanted to spend a little bit of time in just transition. I don't know if any of you are familiar with this. Um, uh, in our, in our, those of you who are not Irish based, in our, in our Midlands we had a huge industry around peat production. Uh, obviously with the whole uh, climate action and, and move away from that, uh, from brown to, we're, we're moving here from brown to green. Uh, part of the EU, there's an EU fund to develop this uh, territory away from peatland production um, and to, to um, I suppose, 
uh, regenerate these, these towns and villages and, and area. We pitched that actually a great way to do this would be to um, uh, develop it as a, a tourism product, but develop a network of trails. Uh, so the guys from Orney are well familiar with this, but we're looking to have a, a whole um, network right across the, the bogs of the Midlands. Um, and while it won't complete the project 30 million, it will, will start it. Um, we are looking with, with, with working with Bordemona, which, which are doing the peat production, to turn what would have been old railway lines and uh, former peatlands into trails right across the country, connecting them up, bringing them into towns and villages, into other attractions, and to really make this a real, I suppose, uh, outdoor uh, destination. And what works in its favour in the cycling collective uh, is, um, is because it's quite flat land. So it means people, even those who aren't hugely uh, fit, um, uh, would be able to utilise it. However, uh, from being in the bogs, we need to add some additionality in terms of wow, it's an interesting thing because if you're cycling through bogs for kilometres and kilometres, that there's not, <laughs> not a lot of differentiation. Uh, so there's, 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 but it, 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 it is wonderful. So we need to add interpretation, uh, add experiences to that. But it, it is a huge, huge project which we're developing. And I suppose where I kind of see it very much as, whereas the Wild Atlantic Way um, was a catalyst for the whole west coast of Ireland, and, and, and in 10 years, as I said, we've seen 35,000 additional jobs in it. I think in 10, 15 years' time in this territory, it'll also be acting as a catalyst, and we'll, we'll see the same. But its foundation will be utilising its um, natural assets and, and building a walking network. Uh, the rest of today is talking a lot about data capture, and I want to just briefly uh, touch on this ourselves. Um, where we find, and I suppose from my perspective, when I'm talking to my board and trying to get them to invest in a project, they're kind of going, yeah, what, what's it worth, you know? And it, it's, sometimes you're dealing with accountants and they've got to see the money and does it make sense and why should you do this? And saying, well, it's good and it's great and, you know, it's great for people's health, they're going, yeah, what's the bottom line? Order? So I have to try and figure out, okay, what's, what's the, the benefit uh, from a tourism perspective and, and to try and put some more forward value on it. Um, and we, 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 it's, it's quite hard because we don't have a lot of, a lot of uh, data. So we're kind of recognising that ourselves. Uh, but it is important that we put a value on this. It is a huge value. But it's like, um, you, know, uh, you know, you take the, the, the National Park, uh, Glendalough, there, you're there today. Like, it's open. People are walking in. People are utilising it. There's, there isn't a ticket price, so it's hard to say. But it, you could not have that asset. But it's to, to put a value on that. So we're working to try to see how we can put a value on it so that uh, it, it helps us build our case with, with well, my, my own board, but with government to get more, more money in. Um, and it doesn't help that there's different ways of measuring it. Uh, there's a broad mix of qualitative and quantitative, and there's people coming at it from, from different perspectives. Uh, and it is difficult to measure. And what, what we're trying to see is, you know, um, and actually, we were able to see it, and we've seen it in, in, in the Waterford Greenway. Um, we've seen how you know, towns and businesses have popped up and improved. But we need a, a consistent way of measuring that. So we're, we're trying to develop that, and we're doing a pilot. Um, and this, we're calling it MOVE, very clever. Um, but Mobility and Natural Value Estimates. Sorry, the E's meant to be up there. <laughs> um, so what we're, we're doing this as a pilot on, on, on greenways and we hope that we'll have some fun and answer back and, and, and report in 2025 but it is really important in case making for further funding to do what we want to do um, and to have best in class and to have good quality is if we can actually quantify the benefit um, and in government you're looking for money that does come down to a little bit more of economics rather than, uh, well I'm not saying it's not important down to health and all that sort of stuff, it equally is, but they like to, to get it to a monetary value. So I think this will be, will be huge to benefit. So look, I hope that's a whistle stop tour, there's loads to go through today, but I just wanted to, I suppose, highlight to you, um, you know, from a, a, a tourism perspective, you know, the, the uh, outdoor activities are, are hugely important. Um, and we want Ireland to be an outdoor destination. We're, we're, we're seen as, as green. We're, our landscape has always been our biggest motivation for people to, to, to come. Um, in the olden days, they, they were looking at it through the window of a bus. Um, we'd rather they got out and about in it. Uh, but to do that, we need to make sure we do that in a well-managed way so that we maintain those assets for, for, for future generations. So um, thank you very much. I, I know there's a good question.
Zahir 